So first of all, uh, before forgetting it, forgetting it uh, this is uh, I will present a joint work with Alexandre Richard from Ecole Centrale Superlec. That's a very long story because we started years ago and we finally uh, understood what was behind our very long calculations a few weeks ago. And then we revisited all our previous works, work on the subject and found, I guess, the optimal result on that topic. Before uh, presenting you the main results and uh, some of our very last techniques, I would like to, maybe I switch to French for just a couple of minutes, at least partly. So, uh, no. <laughs> uh, I, I, um, I speak in English uh, a few minutes again. Um, I, I started to know uh, Gilles at the end of the last century at Ecole des Ponts, the CERMA lab, at this lab, at this uh, time, the, it was uh, the head of the CERMA was Nicolas Boulot. And Nicolas Boulot uh, started, started to be interested in, uh, let's say, numerical applications for stochastic analysis and inviting me to give a seminar. So I was just saying that Nicolas Boulot invited me to give a seminar. And uh, around Nicolas Boulot, there were Damien Lamberton, Bernard Lapère, and uh, Gilles Pages. And uh, Bernard, Gilles, Damien, and I, we started to think, of, or we started to share our common interest to stochastic analysis problems arising from uh, numerical simulations of stochastic processes. And in fact, it was the, I think the very, the very beginning of uh, the development of uh, numerical probability in France and in fact, everywhere in the world. So, uh, and I started to become a friend of uh, Gilles and I appreciated uh, already at this time a lot his uh, energy and uh, his uh, humoristic point of view. So first, uh, I would like also to emphasize that Gilles invented the terminology probability numérique. It was uh, during a meeting where we uh, had to choose a title for the first international conference on this topic, because Nicola and I, we, we succeeded to get a, a, fund, a funding from Europe. And uh, she proposed uh, the, this title for the conference, Numerical Probability. And it was uh, one of the pretty good ideas coming from Gilles in this field. So uh, you, when I uh, think of this period, I think of, of, and, uh, of the many meetings we had, all of us, I think of the Trois Mousquetaires, of course, and uh, Portos could be played by uh, Bernard Lapère. Atos, a bit more severe, could be played by Damien Lamberton. I was a kind of Aramis, and of course, Gilles was d'Artagnan. Okay, so now, I uh, apologize to Gilles. In my talk, no Euroscheme, no quantization, no Monte Carlo method. 
no invariant measure, no weak convergence of semi-Mertingales, no stochastic algorithm, and so forth. But anyway, I, I expect you will be interested in uh, some of the results. So what's the objective? The objective is to study the sensitivity of uh, stochastic differential equations with respect to the hypothesis, the common hypothesis on the noise. I mean, for many reasons, including simulation reasons, uh, we are used to choose Brownian motion driven stochastic differential equations as models. So, Maybe the, the main reason, so there are essentially two reasons for that. First of all, because the Brownian motion is a, the natural limit of natural noises uh, specified by engineers. And second reason is that because of the, of the fact that the SD is driven by Brownian motion, we get Markov models. And this Markovian property, of course, helps in the analysis of the model and in the simulation of the model. But uh, statistics uh, sometimes show that the noise in the data should be modeled by, let's say, uh, fractional Brownian motions, or at least noise with memory rather than with pure Brownian motion. So then the question, the natural question is, uh, when we use a Brownian motion rather than the fractional Brownian motion, do we simplify too much the, the reality? So we have to develop a sensitivity analysis with respect to the parameter script H, which describes the difference between a pure Brownian motion and a more general fractional Brownian motion. Actually, when capital H is exactly equal to one half, we get the pure Brownian motion. So one difficulty uh, we had to face with Alexandre it was to find a common uh, analysis either when capital H is bigger than one half or lower than one half. And I will explain you in a few minutes why the, the two situations are so different. Anyway, we succeeded to find a common framework to develop all the calculations. And uh, we will focus on, on two different problems. The first problem is uh, rather smooth in terms of Magyarin calculus. That means we want to uh, estimate the sensitivity with respect to capital H of quantities of the type expectation of phi of the solution at time t, where phi is a smooth function. And the second problem is an extremely irregular problem, singular problem in terms of Magyarin calculus, because we will be interested in the sensitivity of Laplace transforms of the first passage times of the, the solution of the SDE at given thresholds. So first passage time are very irregular functionals in terms of Magnava calculus and Laplace transforms is also an uh, irregular function. So the motivations come from neuroscience because uh, the electric activity, electrical activity of uh, neurons is described by uh, uh, first passage, first passage times. Risk analysis, of course, the first percent, the first time at which a portfolio uh, reaches a critical value. 
stochastic computational models because you want to avoid that, uh, let's say, uh, the result of your simulations reaches uh, too big or too small values. Okay. So main results uh, on concerning the, the first problem, I wanted to compute, to estimate expectation of phi of the solution of the SD at and t, driven either by a, a fractional body in motion or by a pure body in motion. And you can see the results. It's, the estimate is of order h minus one half in absolute value. And for the Laplace transform of first sitting times, see maybe directly the estimate, uh, the order of convergence is uh, h minus one and a half in absolute value to the power one over two, maybe to the power capital H when H is less than one over two, times a quantity mp. Now you can see the definition just above the statement of the theorem, which is related to exponential moments of the exact of the solution xh okay of course the statement would not be satisfying if we don't have a precise estimate on the quantity mp so that the that will be uh, given to you in the next slide. I just want to emphasize the difficulty to get the estimate in the theorem is to get the optimal rates with respect to H minus one half. I will explain later on where the difficulty, from where the difficulty arises, but also the dependency with respect to one minus x naught. One here is the given threshold. X naught is the initial condition of the process. And with respect to lambda, because what we want to get on the right hand side is some things which decays exactly as a as a uh, Laplace transform. I mean, the function mp should uh, decay to zero exponentially fast when lambda goes to infinity and exponentially fast when x naught goes to minus infinity. So that's the, that's the main challenge in uh, to proving this uh, theorem. Okay, so I just repeat, uh, the convergence rate on the Laplace transform on the first sitting times should be of the type H minus one over two in absolute value to a satisfying power times something which goes to zero exponentially fast when lambda goes to infinity and when the distance from the initial condition to the threshold goes to infinity. So and just to emphasize one, once more what, what I just said, for the pure Brownian motion, the Laplace transform the first in, is eating time is exponential of minus square root of lambda, two lambda, times the distance between x naught and the threshold. So it's exactly the kind of estimate we need uh, to, to be able to, to get 
on MP. And actually, here is the result we, we have. So focus on the first term on the right hand side, the other terms are more complicated uh, algebraically, but uh, all of the same order. So you can see Q is uh, P, P times O of lambda. O of lambda was given on the preceding slide is, a is a of the order square root of two lambda. So you get here square root of two lambda times something of which uh, times P. So, uh, and M is uh, something which is of, of the order one minus six naught because capital F, you will see the Lamperti transform, so it's an, a nice function. So Q times N gives you exactly the order P times the square root of lambda you are looking for. So just to conclude, uh, with the, the disestimate on MP, the theorem two gives you the precise accurate on uh, the convergence rates of uh, the first sitting times when capital H goes to one half. So a few reminders on the fractional Brownian motions. So fractional Brownian motions with Hurst parameter capital H is a Gaussian process which is self-similar, has stationary increments and a covariance function, which depends on capital H, of course. And you can see when capital H is equal to one half, you get exactly the covariance function of the pure Brownian motion. Okay. It appears that this covariance function can be expressed as the integral of a kernel KH SU times the kernel KH, but at time TU, and you integrate with respect to U, uh, which is uh, the K observation to justify the, the boxed formula at the end of the slide. You can represent the fractional Brownian motion BH as a stochastic integral with respect to the pure Brownian motion capital B. The integral makes appear the kernel KH. So the two difficulties arising from that formula are the following. First, of course, you, do, you lose the martingale property of B because you integrate from zero to T, a kernel which depends on T. And second, the kernel KH, as you can see in the middle of this, of this slide, the, the kernel KH is a singular kernel. In particular, you can see when the variable R goes to zero, you have, you can't, uh, you can choose capital R equal to zero because you have, an, you would have an integral from zero to S of theta to the power H minus three over two. So that's in fact, what is hidden in most of the lengthy calculations in the paper is the difficulty to manage these uh, singular integrals when a script R it goes to zero because of the singularity of the integrand. Okay. So anyway, because of the representation of BH in terms of uh, an integral with respect to B, we can use the machinery of uh, Malyavin calculus to develop our sensitivity analysis. 
So we will need a second uh, very singular kernel, which is uh, KH star. Forget uh, the precise definition, this is very interesting. You just uh, keep in mind that as a KH, you, you can see it's a singular kernel. You can see uh, theta minus s to the power h minus 3 over 2 in the definition. Um, so when s goes to theta, when theta goes to s, excuse me, uh, you have uh, problems, except when the function phi is uh, older. Continuous. Okay, so now define a Malyavin derivative dh as follows. dh is the inverse of the operator kh star composed with the standard Malyavin derivative d with respect to the pure Brownian motion. Then once you have it construct, defined this Malyavin derivative dh you can define the score on integral delta index h by the standard duality formula, which is written in red. And you can prove the very nice formula, the score on integral dh, delta h, excuse me, is equal to the standard score on integral with respect to the pure Brownian motion of the process u you want to integrate, but you, the price to pay is to uh, apply first the singular operator e h k h star to u. Okay. Now, uh, you can define the Stratonovich integral. Whatever is capital H, I mean lower than one half or bigger than one half, as the limit in probability of a standard Lebesgue integral. You may forget the definition. And you have a very nice formula at the very end of the slide, which tells you that the Straton this Stratonovich integral is related to the score rod integral delta capital H by the formula Stratonovich integral is equal to score rod integral plus a perturbation term, which, is, which I call it the trace term, which is defined on the slide, but forget the, the definition. We will see uh, the exact value of the trace operator in the cases we are interested in. Okay, sketch of the proof. First of all, of course, we will need somewhere um, an ITO formula for the process XH solution to the SD driven by the fractional Brownian motion. So first, we have to define the notion of solution so when capital H is bigger, well, bigger than one half, we chose the passwise solutions in the sense of Young introduced by Vallard and Rascanou. And for capital H lower than one over two, we chose the notion of solution in the sense of Allos, Leon, and Vallard. But uh, we, we didn't find the literature uh, general uh, ITO formula for the such a process XH. I don't explain you, I have no time to explain you the, the reason for that, but uh, there are reasons. Anyway, so uh, the point is that we can, we, we can proceed in two steps. The first steps, because of the structure of this SD, we can first, uh, you, if uh, you suppose that sigma satisfies an ellipticity condition, you can use the Lamperti transform and uh, reduce XH to uh, process YH, 
whose diffusion coefficient is equal to one. So in some sense, you first prove uh, 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 Nito's formula to go from the XH process to a process with a diffusion coefficient equal to one. And uh, the proof is based on the fact that the diffusion coefficient of the target process is equal to one. That's very important. And second, okay. And uh, second, you can uh, construct a Nitos formula for functions of, of yh. And uh, now the proof is based, is based on the fact that the diffusion coefficient of uh, the source process y is exactly one. Okay, so you need, at least we need it, Alexander and I, we needed we need these two steps to, uh, to use it to, to transform the process XH uh, by means of Ito's formula. And uh, one point interesting in that story is that uh, we can explicit the Malgava derivative DH of the process YH and the formula, as you can see, is very simple because the, the division coefficient is equal to one. So the only thing you have to, re to recall in, in the future is that you can see this Malgavin derivative is of, uh, is of the type exponential of an integral from R to T. And therefore, dH yH minus one is of order T minus R. Okay, so let's prove uh, the first uh, the first uh, convergence rate estimate. So the KID is uh, to consider a parabolic PDE satisfied by the expectation of phi of xt. So in the pure Brunham case, h equal to one half by the standard Eto's formula applied to <coughs> the solution to this PDE. So you can recognize the, the generator of the process y and you can recognize the test function phi as a terminal condition. So you apply the Eto's formula to ut on yt and uh, as you know it, of course, you, you make up here um, uh, Martingale plus a term which is equal to zero because it's exactly DSU plus the uh, infinitesimal generator of Y applied to the function Y, U. So because of the PDE, you get exactly UT of YT equal to U naught Y naught plus Martingale and therefore, and as u at time t is equal to phi, you get the nice formula, the Feynman-Kac formula, expectation of phi of yt is equal to u of at time zero and point y naught. So, of course, what is natural is to apply this function u not to yt, but to uh, uh, y, at, uh, at point uh, u at point y script capital H. Okay, so uh, then you you apply the Ito's formula we proved a few slides ago, and instead of the, the stochastic integral with respect to b, you make up here first. Uh, you make appear the score out integral delta script h and uh, instead of making appear the du over ds plus the uh, infinitesimal generator of y applied to u you make appear the trace term of all ito's formula now you use the pde solved by u to get rid of dsu plus dyu the first term on the right hand side. So you make appear 
minus one over two times the second derivative of u. Okay. Because of the PD, the SU plus B tilde times the first derivative of u is equal to minus one over two times the second derivative. Of course, you keep the trace term. And you use the fact that the expectation of the scored integral, so recall, delta over script h is equal to delta of kh star times mu times uh, the integrand. Okay, so the expectation of the scored integral is equal to zero. So if you can prove that what you integrate is a nice sober space, the expectation of delta h of uh, blah, blah, blah is equal to zero. So you just keep the trace term and uh, you introduce minus one in the trace term, in the integrand of the trace term. The price to pay is uh, d, the second derivative of u times the integration of s minus r to the power 2h minus 2, which gives you a capital H times H to the power of 2H minus 1. That is this first term in red here. Okay. So we now have the two terms, delta 1 and delta 2 to handle. But you, you can imagine the second term should be reasonably of order H minus 1 half. If you can prove that every the, the double integral is finite. And uh, the first term, you can expect that uh, it's of order, the same order, because when h goes to one half, this quantity is more or less uh, the, uh, the measure h times s to the power 2h minus 1 ds is more or less a delta measure at point 1 over 2. Okay, it's, in fact, it's exactly what is written here, except that I should have written absolute value of h minus one half here. Ah, no, excuse me. I uh, reset myself to h bigger than one half in that slide. In that slide. So that's a very easy calculation to show that the very, the delta one term is of order h minus one half and uh, it's a very simple calculation as well to show the second integral is of the same order because the fact that uh, you have, uh, excuse me, you have introduced minus one here allows you to use the fact that dhyh minus one, as I told you a few minutes ago, is of order a, uh, or uh, S minus O, and that allows you to get rid of a part of the singularity of uh, the integrand. Okay, for H uh, lower than uh, one half, similar methodology, but then the calculations are pretty much more complex. Okay, what can we do for Uh, Laplace transform of uh, first in, in terms. So, of course, the first in estimate, estimates on the first in, in terms of xh or uh, estimates on the first in, in terms of uh, yh is the same problem because uh, you just have to change the first hitting times, the first hitting time of the process from X naught to capital F of X naught, where capital F is a Lamperti transform. And uh, the threshold, you transform the threshold from one to capital F of one. So that's exactly the same problem. And not the, the main idea is to keep the idea of uh, using uh, a PD, 
Here, the PDV reduces to a differential equation, which is associated to the first sitting time. The, the, the Laplace transform of the first sitting time, excuse me. So for the Y process, the Laplace transform, depending on the initial condition Y not, solves the, the, the following ODE. You can see the generator of uh, Y the, in the pure Brownian case. You can see uh, the source term equal to lambda times W lambda. And you can see the limit conditions. Of course, when the argument Y tends to infi minus infinity, the thinking times turn, tend to plus infinity. So the Laplace transform tends to zero. And when you start from the threshold, the first sitting time is zero. So the boundary condition of the threshold needs to be equal to one. So again, in the pure Brownian case, you can apply two formula to exponential of minus lambda t times w at time yt and prove that the solution w index lambda is actually exactly equal to the Laplace transform. So you keep the preceding idea in the preceding slide and you apply this little formula now to the process y h. And again, you make appear a score root integral, delta h. You make appear part of the generator of the process y in the pure Brownian case, and you make appear a trace term. Okay, so the point is that, excuse me, I forgot to tell you something. To, to prove that in the pure Brownian case, uh, the function W lambda gives you a uh, Feynman Kac formula for the Laplace transform, you need to apply the Ito formula at a random time t, which is the first sitting time. Okay, because you need expect to make appear expectation expect expectation of the exponential of minus lambda at time two times one because one is a boundary condition at the boundary point. And uh, the difficulty now we have to face is that the, the, the expectation of a start score of integral is not equal to zero. So that's the main difference with the pure Brownian case. There is no, stop, no uh, stopping theorem to handle a stopped stochastic uh, sto score integral. So here is the diffusion Denis, the promise. Uh, Denis, uh, yes. Uh, tu as deux, trois minutes pour conclure. Okay, no, I, I will be fast now. Uh, here is a definition of the trace term in the particular case of uh, uh, the process YH. So the representation of uh, the error term is as follows, uh, an integral with respect to DS because of the trace term at the, stop, uh, at the stopping time, plus a term which is the expectation of a stop stochastic integral, so-called integral. So here is the, again, the expression you have to handle. So the first term, is that the term which is expressed in terms of the trace term, uh, the analysis of this term makes appear the difference between the function h times s to the power 2 h minus 1 minus 1 half, exactly as in the regular case. 
And also makes appear the, the analysis of the operator kh star when h tends to one half. And it's obvious that kh star when h tends to one half, this operator tends to the identity. The point is that we have to identify the rate. And for the stopped scored integral, the story is much more complex. But again, we have to observe that k star is not so far from the identity operator. And then we have to study the sensitivity of a scored integral of an integrant which tends to zero. Uh, okay. And uh, this integrant depends on the singular operator kh star. So that is not so obvious. I, actually, we need 40 pages of calculations to get the right estimate. And uh, the main ideas we developed this last month is to use explicit calculations as long as possible. So I, I don't uh, tell you more on the subject, but uh, using these uh, explicit expressions as long as possible and using Taylor expansion, we, were, we are lucky enough to find the optimal convergence rate of uh, the error for the error term. So perspective, so the first observation is that because of the uh, convergence rate in terms of h, h minus one half to a given power, we observe that the pure Brownian model, model is robust. So if the data analysis shows you that capital H is not so far from one half, you can use the Markov model as a pretty good model, so use it. Of course, we would like to get rid of the electricity condition on sigma and change the corresponding PDE, but then the calculations are horrible because of the difficulty to, to, to prove a nice ethos formula. Uh, Multidimensional models uh, should be possible, but again, we have to prove uh, an ethos formula the suitable ethos formula. And uh, finally, we would like to invert the Laplace transform and get information not on Laplace transform only, but also on the densities of uh, first hitting times. And that's a very, very big change. So I conclude by uh, uh, being sure that uh, in the next future, there will be a new statue in Paris showing uh, uh, not only D'Artagnan, but also Gilles Pages, the exact figure, the exact uh, feature of uh, Gilles. Thank you very much.